You weren't expecting this, neither was I. Is CNN finally turning on Kamala Harris after Van Jones criticized the Democratic candidate for word salads? I think Anderson Cooper pulled the curtain from Kamala's false bravado on the immigration crisis right around the election, and it gave us one of the most satisfying moments of seeing her scramble to make sense. Just take a look at this, and you'll know what I am talking about. Do you wish you'd done those executive orders in 2022, 2023? I think we did the right thing, and but the, the best thing that can happen for the American people is that we have bipartisan work happening, and I pledge to you that I will work across the aisle to fix this long-standing problem. I think the American people are demanding it yeah. on both sides of the aisle, and it's time we actually put the partisan approach to this aside. We know what can work. Well, let's talk about this compromise bill you, that you want to pass if you're elected. You said that's going to be a priority. It includes $650 million in funding for the border wall. That's something Republicans wanted. That was part of the compromise. Under Donald Trump, you criticized the wall more than 50 times. You called it stupid, useless, and a medieval vanity project. Is a border wall stupid? Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and that border wall. <laughs> so remember, Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for it? Come on, they didn't. How much of that wall did he build? I think the last number I saw is about 2%. And then when it came for time for him to do a photo op, you know where he did it? In the part of the wall that President Obama built. But you're agreeing so to a bill on. that would earmark $650 million <laughs> to continue building that we, wall. I, I pledge that I am going to bring forward that bipartisan bill to further strengthen and secure our border. Yes, I am. But and I'm going to work across the aisle to pass Com a comprehensive bill that deals with a broken immigration system. You could be sure Kamala Harris wasn't expecting that pushback from a relatively friendly moderator like Anderson Cooper, but there's one thing that also should have been mentioned. You'll see Kamala Harris often wanting her supposed bipartisanship on the border crisis to go through congressional action, but despite the fact that she's clowning Donald Trump for barely building a few percent of his promised border wall, a large part of the reason for that was the Democrats in Congress during his administration blocking budget approvals for the wall into a stalemate. It was expected to cost upward of $20 billion, according to reports by the Department of Homeland Security, and even the first $5 billion couldn't be approved in time for construction to begin. By the way, this is a great time to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Do never miss an update from Millionaire Mentor. But I think that's only one small aspect of this entire debate. Over the last two months, it seems like Kamala Harris has been frantically cherry-picking policy positions from her opponent in a bid to give any semblance of original thought on things like the border, economy, and foreign affairs. But no one's buying it, and the fact is that Donald Trump himself understands how hollow these attempts to appeal to the other side really are. That's also part of the reason that this so-called bipartisan border security bill a couple months ago was shot down under Donald Trump's party directives to not give those free campaign talking points to the Democrats while not really conceding much on the core solutions needed for the border crisis. Let me ask you about that. I mean, you talk about the bill that Donald Trump uh, quashed, in, that was in 2024. You talk about the bill he tried to get passed in 2021, that wasn't able to get passed. 2022, 2023, sure. there were record border crossings. You, your administration took a number, hundreds of executive actions. It didn't stem the flow. Numbers kept going up. Finally, in 2024, uh, just in June, three weeks before the, last, the first presidential debate with Joe Biden, uh, you institute executive actions that had a dramatic impact, really shut down people crossing over. Why didn't your administration do that in 2022, 2023? First of all, you're exactly right, Anderson. And as of today, we have cut the flow of immigration by over half. In fact, the numbers I saw most recently, mm. illegal immigration. But if is it was low, that easy on, with that finish. executive me, action, why not do it in 2022, well, 2023? Because we were working with Congress and hoping that actually we could have a long-term fix to the problem instead of a short-term fix. You couldn't have done one and the, both at the same time? Well, here's the thing. I, we have to understand that ultimately this problem is going to be fixed through congressional action. Congress has the authority and the purse. I, I hate to use DC terms, but literally they write the checks. Part of the issue is in order to really fix the problem at the border. I was just at the border recently talking with border agents. You know what they talk about? Yes, they are overwhelmed. They're working around the clock. And the other thing that they talked to me about 
We need more judges down there to deal with asylum claims. We need more <clears throat> personnel down there to deal with processing. And, but Anderson, and that's where Congress kicks in, in terms of dedicating the resources to actually fixing the problem. That is the most coherent sentence she said, but here's why it doesn't mean much. The fact is that all of this talk of fixing the problem would sound better if it weren't coming from someone largely responsible for it in the first place. Now remember, while Kamala Harris has been trying to hide from accountability for her past administration with the idea that she was only the vice president, that actually works less in her favor than she thinks, as Vice President Kamala Harris was put in charge of handling the border and illegal immigration problem in March of 2021, and it was one of the only few things that were officially delegated to her as the so-called border czar, in which she failed in a way that perhaps even Joe Biden hasn't failed. For a statistical comparison, while yearly illegal border crossings under Donald Trump remained almost consistently well under a million, they shot up after 2020 into several million a year under Joe Biden. And now with that abject failure, it's only understandable that Kamala Harris would try as hard as she can to deflect rather than answer a straight question, but it was still interesting to see how Anderson Cooper kept pushing back, almost to the point of making her want to move on and change the subject. To fix the problem, you're, you're doing this compromise bill. It does call for $650 million that was earmarked under Trump to actually still go to build the wall. I am not afraid of good ideas where they occur, you know, So you don't think it's stupid anymore? I think what he did and how he did it did, was, did not make much sense because he actually didn't do much of anything. I just talk, talked about that wall, right? We just talked about it. He didn't actually do much of anything. But you do want to build some wall. I want to strengthen our border. You know what? Why doesn't she just own it? That'd be a much easier way to get out of this question than whatever attempted deflection this was. By the way, here's the Kamala Harris proposal on the borders crisis that includes a continuation of the Trump era border wall, despite the fact that she or the party could have stopped funding for it as part of their proposal, a part of the text in the bill reads, quote, none of the funds allocated for pedestrian physical barriers pursuant to this section may be made available for any purpose other than the construction of steel bollard pedestrian barrier built at least 18 to 30 feet in effective height and augmented with anti-climb and anti-dig features. This sounds a lot like Donald Trump's language and it means that Democratic voters may not have anyone in the party challenging that strong opposition to the border wall even if a potential Trump presidency wants to continue it. The only middle ground she has left is to say it's a good idea implemented badly, which is somewhat the tone she tried to go for here in an attempt to get out of that question, but it wasn't impressing anyone, including Anderson Cooper. By the way, he's not only prominent name on CNN, but seems to be taking Kamala Harris to task like this, because even someone as solidly on the left as Van Jones had to come out and admit how frustrating it is to sit through Kamala Harris's non-answers like this presumably because it could end up costing her electorally. I think the question, if you're at home trying to, trying to figure this out, you can ask, well, you know, could she have done this, could she have done this better? Your job isn't to do town halls, your job is to fight for people. Does she seem like somebody who is gonna take seriously the problems of ordinary people and try to get an answer? And I think that she, I think she passed that test. I think that the word salad stuff gets on my nerves. I think that some of the evasions are not necessary, but when she's talking about trying to get you a house, I believe her. Mm -hmm. she started, like, like, I'm trying to get you to help for your mama yes. <laughs> who's sick. I believe her. Yeah. A lot of people in the party feel the same thing, and that's why there's not really anyone you can call a Kamala Harris voter other than just a Democrat voter. If she doesn't have original ideas, she can't have original and genuine voters who vote for her, and that likely means it'll be near the end of the road for her in the role in the mainstream power corridors of the Democratic Party if she loses. But let me know in the comments what you think and share this video with people that should see it because of course right now it's too early to say anything until we see what happens on November 5th.